I've been collecting data on my solar and battery installation for a whole year now, so I have a pretty good idea of how it performs at different times of the year. Using that information, I've been able to put together a model of how long it will take to cover its own costs from the savings it provides on my energy bills. In this video, I'm going to show you all of my raw data and calculations so as you can see how I've arrived at my answer. Let me first go over the solar and battery installation that I have and how much it cost. Sitting up on my roof are 10 390 watt Trina panels, 7 on the main roof, 3 on the garage, so that's 3.9 kilowatt peak total. Each panel has a power optimizer attached to help the string deal with the shading that I get at different times of the day, and the string goes back to a Solar Edge SE3680H inverter in my garage. Next to that inverter, I have a Give Energy AC3 inverter and an 8.2 kilowatt hour battery, which is used to hoover up as much excess solar as it can manage and smooth out my use of solar throughout the day. I've also got an EPS circuit wired into it to keep my lights and a couple of sockets going during power cuts, and there's a manual changeover switch installed next to my consumer unit, and a special EPS consumer unit for those protected circuits. I've also got a My Energy Eddy sitting in the airing cupboard, controlling an immersion heater in my hot water tank. I had the tank and immersion already, but didn't really make use of it until Eddy arrived. This version of Eddy requires a hub in order to communicate with the outside world, and that's sitting in the garage next to the inverters and things. Eddy also needs to know what's going on with the rest of the kit, and Harvey does that job with its three connected CT clamps. One's on the main feed in the meter box, a second on the solar generation, and a third on the battery feed. How much did all this cost then? Well, the main bill from my installer included the panels, optimizers, inverters, battery, eddy, the additional work for the EPS, and of course, all of the wiring and installation. That came to £9,881.53. Keep in mind that this is from a quote provided back in August 2021. On top of that, I then purchased a My Energy Hub and an extra CT clamp for it because the installer had never commissioned a Give Energy system before, so it was a bit of a learning curve for both of us. Rather than push back, I just ordered what was missing in order to get this working. That cost me £108.12. Then I decided I needed the sensor and relay board for Eddy so as I could keep an eye on the water temperature in the tank. So I purchased that, uh, a PT1000 sensor and a third CT clamp for Harvey to monitor the battery feed. That set me back another £65.95. So the total cost that we're working with here is £10,055.60. So that's what we're starting with then, just over 10 grand of initial upfront investment in this system. If money is all you care about, then the burning question you'll have is, how long until I get that money back? Well, it is a very good question and one that's not easy to give a definitive answer to because of many variable factors. However, if you make a number of assumptions, then it's possible to get a reasonable idea. Before I go into my assumptions, I need to admit that I'm actually still on an old Octopus Go tariff. This is a fixed rate until June 2023. So when you eventually see my calculations, you will notice that the energy rates I've used are ridiculously low for 2022 and half of 2023. What assumptions am I making then? Well, the first one is that the current Octopus Go tariff, which is about 42 pence at peak and 12 pence off peak, will apply for me from June 2023. Secondly, I'll assume a 5% rate of inflation on those rates annually. Next, I'm going to assume that my energy demand does not change. So what I used in 2022 is going to be the same as 2023 and 2024 and so on. I'm also going to ignore my gas savings. I switched from heating my hot water using my gas boiler to using Eddy and the immersion heater. I'm going to ignore those savings completely because I've replaced them with electricity. I guess I could calculate that, but it's quite complicated to do. I'm going to pretend also that there will be no faults or failures in the system. Most of the components are covered under warranty of at least five years, um, some are 20 years. If there's a failure that ends up costing me, then I'm going to have to reassess the payback time frame. Another one is panel degradation. PV panels will lose efficiency over time. There are formulas for this, but I'm going to ignore that for now. And as with my assumption around my demand, I'm going to assume that generation is also static year on year. And lastly, I'm going to ignore the potential lost interest from buying this system versus what you might have earned if you put the money in a bank account. There's a very good reason for this, and I will discuss that later on. 
Right then, onto the juicy stuff, the numbers. Before I can predict how much my system might save me in energy costs per year, I'll need to know how much it actually saved me during the year that I've had it so far. I used Home Assistant to collate all of the energy data from various sources, and then at the end of each month, I would summarize that data in a spreadsheet. Looking on Home Assistant's energy dashboard, I was after the monthly values for how much energy I drew from the grid at peak and off-peak times, and then also the actual household demand of energy. For these calculations, you don't actually need to know how much solar was generated because essentially that's wrapped up in your household demand. Over to my spreadsheet then, I entered that data into it each month along with details of the tariff I paid per kilowatt hour. Take a look at the very first month in the list, November 2021. I didn't have solar at all that month, but my split between peak and off-peak usage was 54% in favour of peak. By using solar and a battery, the aim is to reduce both the total draw from the grid and also skew that usage in favour of off-peak. So for each month, I already know how much that energy cost me to buy. What I need to do is estimate how much my total demand would have cost me if I didn't have solar or a battery that month. Well, taking the assumption that when we didn't have solar or a battery, 54% of my usage was at peak. I calculate the cost of 54% of that demand at the peak rate, 46% of that demand at the off-peak rate. Finally, I subtract the actual cost from the estimated cost and then add on the amount received for any exported energy to give me an estimated saving on my bill. Doing that every month for 12 months gives me an estimated monetary saving for the whole year. But forget the money for a minute because rates can and probably will change every year. What we're really interested in here is the total annual demand in kilowatt hours versus the amount that we imported at both peak and off-peak times for the whole year. In a different part of my spreadsheet, I have totaled up this data for 2022. As you can see, my total demand for the year was just over 11,000 kilowatt hours, made up of about 8,100 kilowatt hours for off-peak and just under 3,000 kilowatt hours at peak. But looking at my actual grid draw, that was only 5,875 kilowatt hours at peak and 2,311 kilowatt hours off-peak. So on average, over the whole year, only 28% of my usage was at peak. Now we're ready to take all of this data and feed it into my main payback calculator spreadsheet. At the top of my spreadsheet is a parameters section, and in there you need to enter all of the various values connected with your historical data or assumptions before you begin. You tell it how much your system costs to install, how much your actual energy demand is, remembering that this is not how much you draw from the grid, this is how much you actually need to use regardless of whether that comes from the grid or your solar panels. You'll need to tell it how much you export in a year, the split of peak to off-peak usage when you didn't have solar or batteries. Uh, this was my 54% figure from November before the installation. Then fill in your total annual grid draw and the percentage of that which will be at peak times. So that's 28% for me if you remember. And then finally you tell it a rate of inflation and I've chosen 5%. Once you've sorted out the input data, then we take a look at the colourful table below the parameters. For the year 2022, I've put this in as static data because I know how much I've saved, £531.29. This purple column near the end is going to keep track of how much I've eaten into my initial investment. For 2023, you'll notice what still appears to be low tariff rates. This is because I've taken an average of my current low GO prices and the newer, much more expensive GO prices. For 2024 onwards, I've taken the latest GO tariff data, increased it by inflation and then carried that on for the remaining years. For each year, I've broken down the calculation steps so as you can see how much it reckons you'll have paid for your energy without solar and how much you would pay for it with solar and a battery. And therefore the difference between those is your estimated bill savings that year. And on these assumptions, how long will it therefore be before my energy savings have paid for the installation costs of the system? Drum roll please. Seven years. Well, during the seventh year, I will break even. I'll let that sink in for a minute. The main reason for such a quick payback time is because of the sky-high energy costs right now. 
I don't think they'll come back down to where they were for a long time personally, but because they're so high, payback is much sooner than it would have been if I'd have done these calculations a couple of years ago. Earlier on when I listed my assumptions, I said that I wasn't going to include lost interest in these calculations, so I'm going to explain why. The reason is that you should consider this as a standalone investment in itself, and you can pick the time period over which you wish to calculate your return on investment and compare that final value with other investment products as you see fit. If you were to try and include lost interest in the break-even calculation itself, then you can no longer compare it against other investment products. Uh, let me show you what I mean. I've already shown that my system should have paid for itself during its seventh year. By the end of the eighth year, I will actually have made an additional £2,248 in energy bill savings, which is a 22% return. At the end of the ninth year, I'll have made a 43% return, 10 years and that's 65%. A 10-year investment with a potential for a 65% return sounds like a good investment to me. This works because once your system has covered its initial cost, uh, it's now just sitting there generating free energy and helping shift your usage around to improve your energy cost efficiency. Just like any other investments, there are risks such as hardware failures or energy costs diving again. But don't forget that not only are you likely to save real cash money here, you're also reducing your impact on the national grid, helping make it a greener grid. Well, that's all of my cards on the table. I'm going to put all of the data up on my website, including the spreadsheet, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Take a look, pull it to pieces, make your own conclusions if you like. I plan to keep my copy of the spreadsheet up to date every month so as I can compare my predictions to reality. So there'll probably be another video in a year to see how we're getting on. Overall, I hope that you find this useful. If you did, then please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.